Well, hello everyone. I'm Mary Teresa Duggan and I'm a trained teacher and a certified breath practitioner and the author of a book titled Miracles, the Magic of Life, showing how the power of the breath can transform anything that you want to change in your life, whether it's to do with health, relationships, money, spiritual awareness, meditation, inspiring you to live and radiate your truth, to live and radiate your divinity. And I have here with me the lovely Binny Dansby, who is going to be on this interview with me. And Binny teaches the static life, the static birth, conceive the possibility. For over 30 years, Binny has taught, trained and guided people through her source process and breath work, which is a system for personal and, uh, and professional development. Now this system for Binny is to empower each person to facilitate the safe and effective release and healing. And this is only one of the areas of her expertise. So we would love to hear from Binny herself. So it is my great pleasure to introduce Binny Dansby. <laughs> Welcome, Binny. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. That's one of the nicest absolutely the nicest introductions I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Benny. Well, Benny, with all your experiences, you know, when you hear the words fullness of life, what does that mean for you? Fullness of life is uh, to be wholly engaged, to be able to as in taking a deep breath, to move into life with an open heart. Um, you asked me about the fullness of God a few moments ago. I deeply believe that God is that place where we are all connected. And when we live from connection, when we live in the integrated knowledge that I am connected with you and you are connected with me, it, it expands and empowers every breath I take. Well, that's the fullness of everything when you say that, isn't it? It's definitely wonderful. Can you think of a time in your life, Benny, when you didn't feel that fullness of life? Oh my goodness, yes. I think before I had my first breathwork session, um, I um, I described it as having this um, empty place in the pit of my belly in, in the solar plexus that had a scream in the middle of it, you know. And I had been very successful in a career as a singer. I was being successful as a designer. At the time, I was raising two little boys on my own. Um, and each, each of, uh, you know, I've had a really full and blessed life. But that gnawing sensation was always there until I had my first breath session when Almost immediately, it came to the surface, I didn't mean to do it, I didn't mean to do it. My deep guilt at having hurt my mother when I was born. I had been apologizing forever. So um, that's, um, yes, I can definitely remember. <laughs> what a wonderful release, though. Bernie, wasn't that? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic. The people who were there, this was very early on in the experimentation around re with rebirthing. And I was in a, in a deep water tub with a snorkel. I had never been, I'd never used a snorkel before. And I was told to 
like by Leonard Orr to, you know, lie down and breathe, you know, on my, on my face. And I was in a deep jacuzzi bathtub. And everyone there said that I literally el um, levitated out of the tub. After I'd been breathing for just a few minutes, I really fell into a very deep, non-ordinary state. Um, and I think some of it was because I had given birth twice before. Yes. Um, I was also, I was very ready. I was very ready. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and how has that affected you for the rest of your life? Well, my dear, <laughs> <laughs> we kept experimenting with this, you know, and um, um, within five, and one of my very earliest sessions, and this was, we did it all in water. Um, nobody really thought that it was about the breath. We thought it was about the hot water, you see. So, um, but I was in a in a, uh, a tub with um, just one person sitting on the outside and with a snorkel and I was breathing every cell of my body was vibrating and and I was and and a lot of fear was coming up and then all of a sudden I heard myself I, I came up out of the water and I looked at this woman and I said, I have to take this to pregnant women because I said, this is exactly how I felt when I was in labor the first time. And if they could feel this, if a woman could feel this energy moving and know that she could breathe with it and it was safe, then she could give birth more easily. And the woman looked at me and she said, oh, well, that's nice, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> and I went back underwater, right? So, and I was pretty shocked by that, you know. So, because um, I was a pretty dedicated New Yorker. I was pretty, very dedicated to my, my work. And um, yet within five years, Mary, I had moved to California and I was working full time as a breathwork therapist. Oh, and in about five and a half years, I met my first pregnant couple. Well, in fact, they came to me to do couple counseling and, and um, breathwork in the water. It's, I worked a lot in water. I'm a double water sign, so I love water. Um, but, and they became pregnant and we co-created, I worked with them, uh, working up to the first water birth in the United States. So. Oh, that was amazing. That's, it's a miracle a moment, isn't it? It's yes. just, an, and you must have done many since then, have you, Billy? Yes, I worked for nine to ten years, um, both with, I feel really blessed that I was working with private clients, just adults, remembering and releasing their births. I'm in a city, if you heard, if any people heard the sirens, I'm in London. Um, and I also uh, had a birth preparation program that was most unusual, uh, that was part creative people. There were about about, oh, a third of the people in the group every Wednesday morning were writers, artists, singers, actors, and the other two-thirds were pregnant women, and their husbands were also there because everyone was in creation and working in the creative process. I've always been creative. I've always known that I was from the time I was born. And finding out what is that creative process has been my mission, I think, part of my purpose. How do you create? What is creativity? Yeah. Well, curiosity, number one, is essential. 
<laughs> the yes. yes. And desire, mm. thought, then action, and then result. You have conception. You conceive a baby. I mean, we have it right before our very eyes. The truth about what, how, what, how creativity works, how the creative process works. We conceive, we are pregnant, and we have a result. And that can be conceiving dinner and going to the supermarket and cooking it. Or it can be about a baby, it can be about a business, it can be about a painting. So that's that's my and that's my passion is the creative process and how to remove the blocks because what I began to discover when from birth which has been my greatest teacher um, what I began to realize is that the blockages that I was seeing in my adult clients we're all coming from their births. I mean, they just, it's not safe. There's no one here for me. There's not enough for me. It hurts to have a body. My body hurts. And I don't have a choice about it. Well, my goodness, if I'm not safe and I'm not supported and I hurt and I don't have a choice, then there's something dreadfully wrong, and that gets you right in the heart. So um, then guilt and blame and shame comes in, and then you can't express yourself, not fully. And you definitely can't connect because you're not sure whether they did it to you or you did it to them. <laughs> it's like, whoo, I'm dangerous, you know. <laughs> Yes. So, and there you are, stuck in that. You know, I'm, I have to stay alone and separate over here. And God, in that case, is a separate entity that's judging me at all times. So I created the archetypal affirmations. And I deeply believe that if a person just focused on integrating those, um, you know, they could, well, I believe that affirmations are great teachers. I believe they are points of contemplation. That the, the simplest, the most simple, the more simple they can be, the more they will activate what's in my core and bring that to the surface so I can heal it. Yep. You know, my body is safe no matter how I'm feeling. Is about as fundamental as you can get. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I feel very strongly about breathing with intention. Using the breath. Because we took our first breath, right? And that first breath is what activated the explosion in the, in the physical. Yeah. Lungs open, pathways for the blood changed, all the different organs came online. I mean, it, it, oh, we give babies less time to boot up than we do our computers. It's just a crime. So I have been very um, focused in, in my work, and especially in the work with pregnancy and with midwives and uh, doctors, to invite them to give time. Give the baby time. Because the truth is we don't have to take our first breath in a shock, in <gasps> In fact, I watch babies born into water and then coming into mother's arms play with the breath. I mean, they, they do a little bit, but they're still receiving oxygen and nutrients from the umbilical cord. Yes. 
So we all need to slow down. <laughs> and um, especially at birth. Yes. yes. There's so much fear around birth. So would you say with with the breath process, fear is not there or it is it is handled straight away? <clears throat> I think um, well, there are people who have said in my groups that they had experienced deeper fear than they had ever experienced before. Right. I think that it's the more safe we are, the more of our fundamental primal fear we can feel and bring up to be released. Yes. So I think because we live in a in fear-based society, that fear is, is here. It's, it's, it's around. It's not a bad thing. It's like, what do you do with that energy? Mm. If, you, if you can breathe into it and remember that you are safe, that you are supported, then the energy can move and you can use it for much more wise purposes. You know? yes. People don't want to feel fear. Heavenly days, they don't want to feel their births again. They don't want to feel how it felt. So they're avoiding it. But if you give them safety and you give them support, mm then those things that they fear the most, those thought forms that are running their lives, will come to the surface. And then they get a choice. And they know the choice. They know they have a choice then, don't they? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think anyone reveals themselves <laughs> to themselves or anyone else until they know that they're safe. And they know they're supported. Right. It simply doesn't happen. Yes. And I can tell from just being here with you and watching you, <laughs> you are a safe and supported space. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been through the same training as you, but not as early. You went through the beginning stages. Oh, yeah. And, you, and you've brought it right... <laughs> Yes. I got to be in the experimental state. Yes. <laughs> and and that is wonderful hearing from you, you know, because that's the beginnings of, I came along years later with Colin Sisson, who brought it from Leonard Orr to New Zealand. And, and it's just for me, it's an absolute miracle a moment. Well, it's a miracle a moment for me in my life. And then watching other people, you know, create their miracles. You know, it's just wonderful. So, after like that's that's just the whole of life you're just talking about there, Vinny, isn't it? So, when when you find yourself <clears throat> in in a place that's not in the fullness of life as we just talked about, and not in that balanced place, um, how how would you personally get yourself back on track? Uh, I have many different ways. I um. I am um, a mantra. I read A Course in Miracles. Um, I meditate. I meditate every day. But, and if I'm really feeling like I'm in the soup, which I, I don't encounter so much anymore. No. <laughs> um, uh, I get into the bathtub with my snorkel and nose clips, and I breathe. Yes. I return to the water because it, that, that's my favorite form of meditation. And I always get my answers. I always get answers. And I always comfort myself. And it doesn't take very long anymore. But um, I also, you know, I think working with other people is so enlivening and so comforting that... Um, and, you know, for 20, 20, 25 years, I've been teaching large groups and training programs. So 
three-year training programs, I become really intimate with people. You get to know people really well on their spiritual path if you're working with them once a month for three years. Now, I'm um, wanting to back away from traveling so much, and I'm starting a private practice in London. and working in a clinic um, in kind of the medical area. And um, I'm, I'm, I feel that I'm attracting some really wonderful, wonderful people. And um, uh, so that's what I'm doing mainly now, is wanting to build a, pra- a private practice. Right. Yes, well, yes, I, I find um, that I prefer the private one-on-one. But I have just just recently discovered, Vinny, that I can do it on Skype. And I've been doing people because I've been putting my book out for around the world, you know, and and then people have come back and said, well, where can we get this? And in some countries, you know, that it's not there. And I, I encourage them to look for it in their own countries first. And if they can't find it there... Well, I can do them once, and I'm absolutely blown away because nobody needs to say they can't have this, you know, because we're all around. Uh, my one of my well, my one of my students who is now who is my writing partner. I'm writing. We have a plan for three books. We have uh, started an online program, uh, healing program called Soul Birthing. And we offer um, a package. A person can do <clears throat> these p- specific processes either one at a time or they can buy the whole package. Um, they get private guidance with either Lynn or me. And uh, they're processes that have been tried and true for 25 years in my yes. trainings. Um, so... That I'm excited about. We're doing that, and um, and I do private I do private counseling, coaching, and breathwork sessions on Skype, and have for four or five years now. I love it. I absolutely love it. Yes, because I get to connect with people, especially my old students. You know, they're not old. They're not old. (laughs) I'm getting older, (laughs) but. you know, I'm I'm so happy to have Skype. I have to tell you, it's just a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. And and it's, what always amazes me is, is every single time I come out energized, more energized. You know, the the energy is just it's just amazing. And we're receiving this from others. Like I love you talked about the Course in Miracles. I love the Course in Miracles too. And I love where it says, you know. I give and receive until the giving and the receiving become one. And, you know, like I was a giver, and, 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 and I expected everybody to receive what I was giving, but I wasn't receiving what everybody else was giving back to me. And, and it's everybody, doesn't matter who it is, everybody I see, I meet, or even think about, you know, I'm giving to them the love that is within me. And... But, and I'm receiving back whatever it is that they too are giving out to the world, and you know it, it's just it's that in, in itself is just so freeing, you know because I don't have to do it all. You know? oh, right, <laughs> it's very very important. Yes. <laughs> When you're working with 80 people in a, in a group, yes, <laughs> yes. to know that you don't have to do it all by yourself. <laughs> yes, that's, that's so true. So um, you, you've, you've told me a lot about um, how you handle people when they, uh, when they come to you. Like if they come to you with an issue, no matter what the issue is, um, have you got a particular way that you handle those issues with people? Like in a group, it, it's very difficult unless you've got somebody to help you, would you say? How do you handle the people in a group then, for example? Well, uh, in a group, in a group setting, I handle people one at a time. Yes, yes. Because if there is one person in a group that has an issue, you can bet that 
you know, there's a whole bunch of people who have the same issue. Yeah. And, and our issues, I think, you know, we all have our own particular stories. And they are unique and they are beautiful and everyone has an amazing birth story. And everyone has an amazing story about what happened to them yesterday. But I listen for the bottom lines. I listen for the operating um, archetypal, if you will, underneath there. The issue, an issue, for instance, with a client today, um, was all about a husband who drinks too much and um, she and he really truly abuses her and I listened to her story and then I suggested to her that we needed to work on her innocence on her purity and on her light because if you are allowing <coughs> someone Excuse me, sorry. It's okay. If you are allowing someone to punish you, then you have decided long ago that there's something wrong with you, mm. that you are guilty. And so then you have to take care of them. And, and so I, that, that's the way I, I handle a one-on-one -on -one or in a group. And it depends upon the subject. Yeah. It depends upon the you know the subjects that we're that we're talking about, um, uh, and and I think it's very very important. I think listening is the basis of all communication. Mm. Yes. Are you listening to yourself when you're speaking? Are you receiving yourself yes. as you're loving? Yes. So the, I handle each person as the individual god goddess that they are. And um, try, not try, I do, I provide a very safe space for them to reveal themselves to themselves. Yes, and, and to be able to get over the fact that you don't understand me. <laughs> it, just, it doesn't matter what somebody else is understanding or not, but if you can understand yourself, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a great freedom, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how do you show or express and experience your abundance, your joy, your love, your energy, to the world. I mean, I, I'm receiving it already now, and it's just amazing. And it's so alive and, and, and so energized. Um, how, how do you express that to the world? Well, I do it by, by teaching. Um, I, you know, I've said I'm starting a, a private practice, a one-to-one -one practice, but I do intend to do some small groups here, and I'll be going to Denmark actually next week to teach um, a weekend um, and I go to Den uh, to Estonia sometimes and you know I go when I'm invited if I want to um, and I'll be doing an empowering woman um, workshop very very soon back in Denmark so I, I part of that is being in front of groups and teaching and and sharing my energy because I do have a lot of passion and a lot of energy. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, and uh, making videos that, you know, that you see on my website, com, And we even have, I think we have a couple of videos on the Soul Birthing website as well. Right, right, yes. So, yes. I mean, that's, you know, it's wherever you are, isn't it? And when the student is ready, the teacher is waiting. So it might be your video, might be your website, might be being in touch with you. Yes. So, so what are you most excited about at this moment? What am I most excited about? 
at this moment. Um, I'm working with a group of, of practitioners, a small group. Um, one is a dentist who works with structuring the body, uh, it literally body structure, through um, building up and working in the mouth to balance the TMJ, which is the most important joint in the body. As above, so below. Um, we also have um, a body work person who supports the structure to move. Um, there is an Ayurvedic doctor and myself working with the emotional and psychic and, uh, you know, the ancient thought forms that are held at the cellular level. The Ayurvedic doctor and I are forming a, a putting together a program for people. <clears throat> We're calling organic regeneration. Beautiful. <laughs> and um, I'm very excited about that. I'm very passionate about that. But we have, our clinic is called One Wellness. And if someone comes, and we have worked with now two people where we all four have assessed them, and they have worked with all four of us to just shine. It's quite wonderful. Oh, yes. Because my own process has been like that. I mean, I, I was being rolled for the first time. At the same time, I was doing breath work the first time. I, and I think, you know, as we, as we release at a cellular level, we need support to release at a psychic level and emotionally. The body needs to come along with that. So um, we're, we work with nutrition, um, body balancing, the breath, thought forms. So it's very exciting. That's exciting. There's a there's you a great a great wholeness there, isn't there, Vinny? Yes. 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 It's not just there's never one answer, is there, to anything? Yes. No. no. I've never, you know, I, I, that has not been my personal experience. No. And um, and so I'm finding because I have a lot of experience with various practitioners. Complementary and alternative practitioners. Um, it's very easy for me to um, recommend people and to bring, you know, to to point people in in directions to support them and whatever's going on for them. Yes. And I feel really privileged to be able to do that. That that's what I find too is the privilege that people are prepared to share their lives with me and share their miracle with me. I find that just an absolute privilege. So, Vinny, um, before we end the session, is there anything else you would like your listeners to know? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's so much, isn't there? <laughs> I'd like them to know that they are loved. I'd like for them to know that it's actually all worked out that they can relax and take a deep breath. And I would welcome anyone who wants to check out the um, soul-birthing.com website and check out our programs and also my website, vinnyadansby.com. I would be remiss if I didn't mention those things. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm very pleased you did, because I know that so many people, and I, I'm hoping it's thousands and even millions of people who hear you on even just this interview, will want to be in touch with you. And, you know, so I'm glad you mentioned how they can do that. Yes, but you've been marvellous, Benny, in, in being so generous in putting out for the people. This is what I really want to, Benny. You know, it's those people who don't know that there is hope there. And and it's not hard. It's as easy as breathing. You know, yes. 
but so long as they have, I, I feel a little bit a bit strong though, Vinny, uh, due to um, about having a trained practitioner. Um, Without doubt, I I've been I help was one of the founders of the um, um, International Breathwork Training Alliance, and um, I think it's exceedingly important training. My trainings, as I may have mentioned. Uh, are three years. I think I think people really need consistency as they're changing consciousness, and they need and deserve support. So um, I think highly trained, very experienced breathwork yeah. practitioners are um, um, people. Really must feel comfortable, and they must feel safe. Yes, and, and or it's just a, you know it's it's it isn't it isn't of value really. No, no, and and then I find too after my three years training with Colin that every year I do um, an update to keep myself updated with my, for myself and for my clients. Of course, yes, of course. Having supervision. Having having colleagues to speak with yes. um, is exceedingly important, yes. and it's also fun. Well, <laughs> really. well, aren't I the lucky one? My two sisters have done the same training, so we do it for each other all the time. <laughs> Fantastic! It is just That's amazing. Beautiful. <laughs> Well, Vinny, Vinny, this has been just wonderful for me, and I thank you a thousand times. And um, I just hope now that so many people will f be in touch with you and get any kind of assistance that they are looking for. So, thank you, Vinny. <laughs> thank you, Mary. Thank you for writing your book. Thank you. Blessings to you now. <laughs> <laughs>